So now that we have our Mac all connected, let's talk about how to use our hand as the mouse because we're not using the trackpad anymore. So if I want to navigate or touch, what I do is I just touch. It's like a click, almost like on our phone. So if I want to open a new tab here, I can touch the plus sign. It's going to open a new tab. If I want to move my window, right, we would normally click and drag. This time I touch and drag. That lets me move things around. And if I wanted to open up my hard drive here, it's a double tap or like we would do two clicks. So one, two, and then that's going to open the window. It does take a little bit of practice, but it's pretty straightforward, right? Instead of using a mouse, we're using a hand. Now, the one thing that's a little weird on Mac is that if I want to type something, I'm going to need to use a physical keyboard. So uh, usually it's nice to have your Mac kind of sitting off to the side, or if you have a wireless keyboard, it's really easy to use. Let's run over to one of my favorite websites called the FET website. It's a nice map and science simulation website. So I'm gonna go in here and we're gonna open up some simulators. Now, one thing to notice on Mac is that if I wanna scroll up and down, like normally if we're using our phones, right? Like I can just swipe here in the middle of the window and it's gonna scroll up and down, but that's not how Mac OS works. Uh, in fact, it thinks I'm trying to click and drag or select over the window. So the easiest way to do this is to grab the scroll bar over on the right, and then that's gonna let me go up and down just like you see here. And again, a single touch is just like a click. Let's open up the simulator. So in this activity, we're just driving uh, the skateboarder, studying some physics. Again, using my hand like the mouse, I can just click and drag. And then when I let go, it'll drop and interact. So just like a normal website, normal documents, you're just using your hand. It does take a little practice, so feel free to play around with it. Now that you're comfortable using touch, let's talk about some system settings that will help you uh, kind of handle the monitor and the audio when you have your Mac connected. So if you didn't know, getting into your system settings, you go to the Apple in the top right corner and then choose system preferences. So the first setting we're going to look at is what's called displays. So I'm going to choose displays from my system preferences. And right now you can see that my Mac is choosing the best settings for something that's called the IFP 7550. Well, this is the IFP. The IFP is the view board. It's the screen. Now, if I open this, you'll see that one of the options is called built-in retina display. If built-in retina display is selected, this doesn't necessarily look as good, right? Because it's trying to match my Mac screen instead of the board. You'll also notice that I get these kind of blank spaces on the side because uh, it's not using the full screen. So uh, my recommendation is that when you're using the board, go into display preferences where it says optimize for, choose the IFP in the list, not built-in retina display. That'll make this screen look better. Now, when you change the setting in system preferences, Mac should remember those settings and automatically apply it next time. So then the next setting that I want to show you in system preferences has to do with sound. So when we connect our Mac, sometimes Mac is not very good at uh, using the speakers on the board. So if I was to play a video, it would actually probably play through my MacBook speakers right now. So same place in the system preferences, see where it says sound. What we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that it's not on the Mac speakers, but again, on IFP. Remember that IFP is the view board. So you'll see here, this is the output menu. Think output, that's where the sound is coming out of. And I wanna make sure that it's not on MacBook Pro. Right now it is, so again, the audio would play through the Mac. I wanna select IFP 7550. That means now the audio is gonna play through the board speakers and not my MacBook. You can also add a little shortcut. It says show volume and menu bar. This is sometimes a little easier and kind of a Mac Pro tip. But what it does is it puts the volume up here so you can adjust the sound manually or you can choose uh, the difference between IFP. So if my speakers are on MacBook, instead of going all the way into system preferences, all I have to do is touch the speaker um, on the top and then I can choose it from the list. Now, again, right here, we want to make sure that it's on IFP 7550 and you're good to go. We can close these settings out. Now, once you have all this configured, uh, again, Mac should remember how to handle all these settings. But one thing to remember too is that make sure your board speakers are turned up because even though you change the audio, the board speakers need to be turned up. So choose the volume button. I like to get it up to 100% and just leave it there. 
because when this is at 100%, then I can adjust the volume from my Mac to turn it up or down. If you want to turn the volume up or down a little quicker on the board, instead of just mashing the button, when you see that blue bar, just grab the dot and you can slide it up and down. And that's a little bit faster than pressing the buttons over and over again. So if you haven't already, let's go ahead and go get our Mac connected to the panel. Uh, go in and change the display settings to make sure it looks good. And then also make sure that the audio is coming out of the board and it's not your MacBook speakers. And then go play with touch. See if there's any cool websites that you can use um, and kind of get used to how that operates. And we'll see you in the next video.